This Super Bowl picks and props final edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Monkey Knife Fight. Monkey Knife Fight is daily fantasy made simple, and that's why it's the fastest growing DFS company in the world. Download Monkey Knife Fight and use promo code BURR for a 100% deposit bonus. That's Monkey Knife Fight, promo code BURR. We're also brought to you by BetQL. BetQL is your home for the info you need to make yourself a smarter, better. Plus, the Super Bowl special gives you 50% off their premium data. Just go to betql.com, promo code SGP50. That's betql.com, promo code SGP50. We're also brought to you by Better Than Vegas. Better Than Vegas is the home for avid sports bettors, providing insights, analysis, and free betting picks. Better Than Vegas, it's like YouTube for sports betting. Make sure to subscribe to our page so you never miss a pick. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. Finally, we're brought to you by Better Edge. Better Edge is a stock exchange for sports bets, allowing you to buy and sell betting positions like a stock market. The best part is it allows you to bet with no VIG. That's right, no VIG betting that's legal in 40 states. Sign up at betteredge.com, promo code SGP for a free $10 bet. That's B E T T O R edge.com, promo code S G P. Welcome, everyone, to the sports. Gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? Super Bowl. That's right, Ryan. Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Yes, yes, yes. Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Yes, yes, yes. It's the Super Bowl. We're talking prop bets. We're talking daily fantasy. We're talking just more action on the Super Bowl. Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan, it's the Super Bowl, and uh, man, I'm so jacked on Super Bowl. Not even having the iced coffee. Super Bowl song <laughs> coursing through my veins. Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Yes, yes, yes. Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Yes, yes, yes. We have awesome guests on the podcast: Bill Burr, Paul Verzi, and the man from Circa himself, Derek Stevens. Plus, we're gonna figure out how to spend our 4K in winnings. Oh my God. It's a Super Bowl unlike any other. Still a couple squares left. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash squares. Head over there to get your free entry into our five hundred dollars squares contest. Make sure you tune into our pregame show starting at two PM with a live Let It Ride and then two thirty Pacific West Coast time. The pregame show. Your calls on the locker room app. Super Bowl, Super Bowl, yes, yes, yes. Super Bowl, Super Bowl, yes, yes. Yes, it's here, Kramer. That was more like a spoken word jazz version. I like it. You're more maturing. It's a it's a more grown up version. Yeah, I was. I and listen- remember, this is where you pay tribute to the man who mused you into this song, the team that mused you into this song, the New York Football <laughs> Giants, led by Eli Manning against an undefeated Tom Brady led Patriots. That was the debut was of the Super Bowl. Was song? it a halftime square? Was it a full game square? I don't remember. Oh, what I hit! Yeah, I hit uh, a halftime square and a third quarter square, and I hit uh, Giants and the under parlayed in the first half. Is that not Giants and the under second half and (laughs) Giants money line and the under for the game? So it was a not uh, what triggered the uh, explosion of emotion (laughs) that is now the Super Bowl song. Which, by the way, Sean, I'll have to look into the archives. Two weeks or three weeks prior. We were in Las Vegas together, mm, yes. and we did the ultimate DGen move, which is put every Hashtag single. Only. This is back before cabs took credit cards. We would have absolutely had to go to the ATM to get back <laughs> to the airport because we went all in on the Giants, three to one money line dogs against the Dallas Cowboys. So Ryan, we're trying, to, we're trying to enjoy the Super Bowl, Super Bowl week. We don't need to be crowbarring in. You know stuff about the Giants. I don't know if you read the review. What are you talking about? One guy said five Too stars. Much Giants? They they are homers for the Giants and Eagles, which can get a little old. Just some constructive criticism. Appreciate it, sir. That's what we're here. Jim, and- you know we have to be objective. <laughs> oh man, I uh, not really looking forward to <laughs> Tony Romo, but everything else about the Super Bowl is gonna be awesome. And uh, what an episode to close it down! Again, about to uh, play the segment we just did with Bill Burr and Paul Verzi. Which, by the way, I don't know if you saw this. I, I don't know if this was real or someone photoshopped it, but I saw uh, it might have been Reddit. Someone uh, posted that you could bet on whether or not a toast would be mentioned <laughs> during the broadcast, <laughs> and it was like one of those like fifty to one. Yes, no, no. Well, and you know what the Jim? the loophole is is what if one of these toasted. quarterbacks gets toasted yeah. or gets burnt <laughs> like a piece of toast? 
They may not actually bring up the Jim Nance toast story where it he specifically mentioned like breakfast toast or something like some ridiculous Nance, thing like Nance that. Nance carries a photo of toast, and I I make fun of him for that. But I got a bagel uh, today this morning, treated myself for the Super wow. Bowl. And again, no one in Los Angeles knows how to toast a goddamn no. bagel. Weird, said, considering it, how many Jews we have in this. There's, city. A, there's a large Jewish population, and there's very few awesome bagel places in Los Angeles. And certainly, the places that have bagels don't know how to properly toast it. I need a New York deli it's to like get a, a nice toasted bagel. Instead of being like a nice, light, fluffy uh, thing that is like tough on the outside. It's just a loaf of bread out here. Like they just make you a loaf of bread. Anyway, I was going to say as a man who likes to optimize their life and be as efficient mm. as possible, having a toast card to inform yes, the that's waiter what, I was getting what at. color your toast should be quite optimal. And I I've made fun of them many a times, but they they brought they sent me this bagel that was black like charcoal on one side and almost soft oh, on oh the my. other, completely uneven toasting operation. It was a uh, it was a real disaster, Ryan. But I, I just don't understand. Like I, I get it. Like we've gone to a point where hard work is something that we get excited about instead of just being what you do. But if you work at a place where you're serving toast, if you can't figure that out, like <laughs> honestly, may, maybe may, I don't know. There's not much for you, Ryan. It's the Super Bowl show. People want to talk Super Bowl bets, and we got them covered. Of course, Monkey Wait, Knife. More fight. bets. Monkey knife fight, daily fantasy sports. That's right. Uh, no pros, you know, dominating, winning every sort of contest. Cause you're not, you're not playing in these pools. All you're doing. It's uh, very simple. You're picking over unders more or less some rapid fires. And we are we're about to go through a bunch of them for the super bowl with our buddy, uh, Bill Burr and Paul Verzi. And if you sign up now with an account, you get a free $5 game and a hundred percent deposit match up to $50. When you use that promo code Burr again, B U R R is the promo code monkey knife fight is the app monkey knife fight daily fantasy sports for the rest of us. Joining us on the sports gambling podcast, talking to comedian, Bill Burr, comedian, Paul Verzi. Paul, I know we, uh, we talked on the phone real quick uh, earlier today about this monkey knife fight promo. And I could hear in your voice, the excitement about gambling on more stuff about betting on more stuff, just having more action on the super bowl. What is your, uh, you know, as far as super bowl bets, what's the weirdest thing you've ever bet on? Um, I bet big money on tails once in the coin toss. I usually go tails. And one time I put a stupid amount of money on it, but I was like, Hey, it's 50, 50. And I hit it. Um, and also who's going to score first. Uh, those are the, those are the only ones I never did. Um, I never did like national anthem length or anything like that. But can I just tell you guys monkey, when my wife heard the name monkey knife fight, we bursted out fucking laughing. And I said, I'm betting with those guys, regardless of the service compared to the other ones based on the fucking name. Well, yeah, it's it's off that old uh, old Simpsons episode where they're in international waters betting on two monkeys go at it uh, fighting with knives, and uh, you gotta you gotta appreciate that for a company name. You know, a lot of people put uh, you know fan draft wager in it. They're like, no, monkey knife fight. That's what we're rolling with. What about you, Bill? Any any crazy action on this Super Bowl or in the past? Not on Super Bowls, but I went to the Masters with Paul Verzi in 2010, and we sit. What we sit on the 15th hole. Yes, we did. When we were waiting for him to come through, you're just sitting there drinking beers, and we, there was turtles on these rocks on this water hazard, and we were betting which ones were going to go in first. <laughs> and we got so much money going on it that people around us were like listening. And I had the easiest system. He wasn't paying attention. I just picked the, the turtle with the dry shell. He was like <laughs> looking at sizes and shit. I'm like, that one's getting a little dried out. I love that though. The handicap, like the dried gel, that turtle is due. Look at him. He yeah, needs he's he's dehydrated. He needs to go for a dip. Well, that, and that, like three in a row before he figured it out. Then he started <laughs> picking the dry. Yeah. He beat me on those for sure. That was my worst some sharp turtle racing. Yeah, action. I some, like that. Some turtle insider. That was my worst super bowl prop bet a hosting a, a gambling podcast. Some guy hit me up. He's like, dude, I, I, I got an inside tip. The puppy bowl is already, it already happened. They already taped it. Team rough dominates. 
And I go, okay, this is an inside tip. I got to take advantage. So I bet a shit ton of money on team fluff <laughs> thinking that they, Oh, Hey, the game's already happened. This is easy money. And then I watch it live and they, they just get destroyed. I'm sitting there screaming at the puppies. Like, what are you doing? You don't know how to cover a spread. This is humiliating. It's uh, it's, it's horrible losing money on uh, animal related props for the Super Bowl. It's it's funny you said that. My dad got a tip in the in the in the seventies. Somebody just told him, a, "Goes this horse is taking it at Yonkers Raceway." <laughs> that, this, <laughs> and the horse didn't take it. <laughs> no, any inside tip because every gambler has a system. They think like, "Oh, I got to figure it out." I know a guy. I mean, we had the uh, we had the guy who does the radio sideline reporting for the Bucks trying to get him to leak out the information on what possible Gatorade color we could be seeing. Bill, any thoughts on a, on a Gatorade color for the Super Bowl? Uh, blue is the first thing I think, but then I'm thinking like, because it's such a big game, they're going to want mojo. Yeah. They're going to want like team color. So considering Tampa Bay doesn't make a pewter, I mean, uh, uh, they don't have pewter colored Gatorade. I, I want to say red, but I think it's going to be blue. I'm going to go with blue. I'm going heads. I'm saying Leonard Fournette scores first. Ooh, nice. Yeah, they're going to establish the fucking running game to keep them uh, that high-powered offense off the field. Um, what else did I say I was going to bet? The, what's the over-under? I'm taking Tampa. Yeah. What do I get, three? You're a, big, uh, you're a big Brady guy. <laughs> Is it weird rooting for Tom Brady in the Super Bowl? Now that he's playing for the Bucks, is it going to be a little bittersweet? Him possibly getting his seventh, not wearing a not at all. <laughs> I am so, dude, I can't even tell you. Like all the Pats fans I know, go, dude, it's like watching a Pats game. Gronk is there. We even had Antonio Brown for a minute. We're fucking psyched, dude. We want this guy. I hope he wins like the next three in a row. I know. As a, as a nine, I love the guy, dude. We were we weren't shit before he came. Well, Bledsoe and Parcells, they put us on the map, and Roger. Uh, Robert Kraft did okay, and then we got the new state. But he came in, dude. We had zero championships, zero. As a, a non-Patriots fan, it's tough to watch because finally, one year the Patriots aren't good. They're not in the playoffs, and now Patriots fans find this other route to get to the <laughs> Super Bowl emotionally. And they're not even they're not even going to be hurt when he wins. They're ready to dump the Gatorade. They're they're buying in on the Bucks. And no, I, I learned how to have peace of mind. <laughs> as as a sports fan, you don't root against anybody else. It's such a fucking waste of energy to even like hate your rival to the point if you lose to them, it ruins your day. You start asking grouchy around your wife. And then can you really shit on her watching Real Housewives at that point? It's like say what you want about how dumb this is, but it doesn't affect my fucking mood. The next morning when I'm eating my cereal. The Cowboys are doing well again. <laughs> I know. I you're 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 basically describing my life because the Eagles lost to the Cowboys, must win game, and we'd rented a cabin for Christmas. It was supposed to be a nice vacation. <laughs> She's like, Why are you ruining a vacation? I'm like, I didn't ruin it. Doug Peterson ruined this vacation. Jalen Hurts ruined this vacation. She goes, You need to go on a long walk. And I'm just going on this long walk thinking of how much money I spent on this vacation and how it's ruined and, and fuck the Eagles. Yo, you know what's funny about Eagles fans is they always bring up that they beat us in the Super Bowl. I don't have the heart to tell them that, dude, we won the one right before you and then right after you. I barely remember the game. <laughs> I it, was know. Shitty, yeah, it was a shitty game, too. But uh, here's another thing, too. Tom Brady. Tom Brady won in 14, 16, 18, and now he's with the Bucks. He's won every other year since 2014. It's and gone so Patriots. Broncos, Patriots, Eagles, Patriots, Chiefs. And now, and then what you're going to have to say is it's going to go Brady, Broncos, Brady, <laughs> Eagles, Brady, Chiefs. I'm hoping Brady. Although I do love, uh, I do love Mahomes. Yeah, Mahomes, I, I really like Mahomes. And I've heard you talk about this. We even have a sound drop of you going off on. Showtime Mahomes. Back in the day. It, he's fun to root for. He's so awesome. But the the way the the commentators kind of slobber all over oh him. Oh my God. They ball like, wash him. It's like he'll he'll throw like a fucking three yard no look pass. It's like three yards. Like, you do this thing, what do you have to? <laughs> I hope you like when they first started selling him. They were like, "I hope you appreciate 
what you want? It's like, dude, you don't need to sell this guy this hard. He's the real deal. <laughs> no, I know. Okay, we're all stop watching. acting like you're selling me fucking Cade McNown. <laughs> Paul, I know you're uh, you're on the Chiefs for the game. How do you how do you kind of see it shaking out as far as game script wise? Are they going to be throwing a lot, trying to get the running game going a little bit? How do you see their path to victory? Um, well, you know, I was just telling Bill before before this segment, I was telling Bill that the way the Bucks are behaving with media day, they yeah. are acting like they haven't been there before. I've noticed the pictures and the poses, and I'm seeing a little bit of a, a lay low from the Chiefs, but. Um, one thing that I stick with, and, and Bill and I did this when we went to the Red River rivalry and we went to the um, Cincinnati Bengals Jackson, uh, Jacksonville Jaguars game on the road. Here's a, here's a betting tip, but it's hard because you need to be at the game. But this is what happens. Go down low before the game. Get there early and watch the teams come out. Because, dude, we bet big money on Texas, Right. And Oklahoma ran out of the tunnel and they just start looking at Texas going. And we just knew immediately <laughs> over. Go, it's fucking over. Oklahoma not only wanted it like they, they, and I'm going, it's fucking over. Do the same thing. No, with we were the- standing there quietly. We were all <laughs> excited. And when, at, when Texas came out, then Oklahoma came out and they were just getting in their grills. And then we were just watching and versus late leans over. He goes, they, uh, they're looking pretty confident. That's, that's literally <laughs> my just, handicapping, no, 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 that's my handicapping strategy at the horse track. I want to see the horses walk around the paddock, <laughs> see who looks like they've been there before. Same yeah. thing. You can, you can um, get a to, that to answer energy. one a mean jockey. You got to look for the meanest <laughs> jockey. I think that Good that's how that man. sport works. Um, to answer the question, I think – For me, I think everything is Travis Kelsey because I had Travis Kelsey in my fantasy league. The guy gets seven to 10 catches every game. And even if you, the thing is, they're going to be focused on on, on Tyreek Hill and Mahomes, I think. So I think Kelsey is, somebody has to be open. Somebody has to be single covered. I think Travis Kelsey is going to have a monster game. I think Travis Kelsey is going to score first. I think it's going to be like a seven to 10 yard in the red zone touchdown. Um, I, I think that uh, Tyreek Hill is the main threat. And I still think if Mahomes gets the ball out early, because the, the Bucks defense is flying right now. So I think that Andy Reid knows that. I think he's got to get it out early. I think Tyreek Hill will have some big plays, but I think the guy, you got to go to the moose. You got to go to the fucking, got to go to Kelsey yeah, all, Kelsey's all had, night long. He's had an insane year. And I, I kind of agree with you. I think they see the Tampa Bay pass rush. They're down a couple offensive linemen. They're going to want to get the ball out quick. And Andy Reid, not afraid to throw a bunch of passes. I mean, you know, uh, Patrick Mahomes is over under for attempts is set at like 41, something crazy. So I think they're going to be throwing a ton. And I agree. not reading the tea leaves, right? <laughs> What's this, your is, this is the greatest show on turf and they won the year before. And now they're playing Tom Brady. This is what's <laughs> going on. He's going to take them out. Oh, How many times does the man have to do it? <laughs> I Come guess on, your is. Eagles beat us at some yeah. point in the last decade. I can't really remember. Hey, look, I think you guys won some game. It was like 58 to 63 or some shit. <laughs> you got your ring. Look like an arena football league. Do not bet against this man. No, listen, do you guys think, because I noticed this, and I know you're an Eagles fan. Do you think some mustard came off the fan base's fastball little? Do you notice that when a team doesn't win for a while? And then they finally win. The fans kind of go, it's like a rapper's second album. Yeah. When it's like, they're just not as, once you get the fucking, once you get the prize. The first like one, the, you're so hungry. Yes. You're so hungry for the first one. But I talked to an Eagles fan who was like, ah, man, I'm still living off that other one. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, you used to be a rabid lunatic. And now he's like, I'm good, dude. <laughs> I'm good. No, everyone, they, they were ruined with the championship. Well, the, that, it, that's it where I am as a sports fan. Oh, like yeah. what I just saw in the last 20 fucking years, it's like we ran the table with four teams. New York's got like 58 fucking teams. They've never run the table, won every single championship in the four sports. What am I going to do? Am I, I mean, there's no way to sustain it. I totally enjoyed it. I got all the dumb hats. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to root against the Chiefs to become a dynasty. I hope they do. My money doesn't, but I, I'm not going to be mad at them. If the fucking Eagles win it again, I don't give a shit. I yes. don't. I will. I will give All a shit. All I want is at some point for someone to address 
what a steaming pile of shit Jim Ursay is. <laughs> what a hypocritical steaming pile of shit, and he runs a bitch ass fucking organization. That's all I need. Yeah, that's I love it. That's the grudge you hold on to. That's, <laughs> no, that's not the grudge I hold on to. Because fucking meathead sports fans actually, like, he ran a successful smear campaign. He really yeah. did. I mean, he, it was all the cult. While cheating himself ridiculously. <laughs> well, and the most annoying part was he turned every, you know, New England sports fan all of a sudden into some – you know, physicists with like <laughs> ideal gas laws guys coming out of the woodwork oh fuck you you ain't throwing that on us that was all you cunts and espn proved proved that it was actually a disadvantage and they buried the story no it really how come you fucking assholes don't talk about how that guy tanked a whole fucking half a season to get andrew luck yeah oh man yeah you forgot that when they pumped in the noise he sat in the competition committee now Andrew the way Luck we covered uh, his receivers fucking illegal and then stole our offense and won a Super Bowl. We didn't bitch. <laughs> now Andrew Luck's like backpacking through <laughs> Europe, hanging out in some hostel. Hey, crap <laughs> goes out to get a fucking hand job. The whole world stops. This fucking guy's like a pill popping lunatic with a dead mistress. Nobody says shit. Well, and, and to that, to That's the a good bo- point. to the bottom. Crap was single. Kraft was single. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Who doesn't go to Florida and go to a jerk off? Of course you do. You go look at the alligators, you get rub one out. What else are you going to do? Go to Ybor City? There's nothing to do there. Not yeah, one. See, see yeah, the sights. I'd love to meet the man who was outraged over Robert Kraft going to a rugby. Oh, they had it's a big just, game, not- wanted to relax before the game, get a massage. That's the boss move. He did it right before the game. <laughs> I'm just glad that fucking video didn't come out. Thank oh, God. God. No one wanted to see that. <laughs> let the man enjoy. Let the man enjoy the twilight of his his wife, rest her soul, passed away. The guy's going to a fucking joint to get a little relaxation. The lonely oh, guy. It around. The man has money. He's helping out the little guy. Stimulating the economy. Yeah. yeah, they tried to turn it into some bigger story of like, oh, this is a uh, sex trade, and they're they're bringing yeah. these women in. Then turned out it was just some some woman from New York. Have you guys who- noticed how happy Goodell looks because the Pats aren't in it, fucking yeah. grinning ear to ear in every fucking stadium. Oh man, he is. He's- oh, he's such a cunt. <laughs> well, I don't know what we did to him. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck we did to him. But that fucking, he's got one. He's got one for us, man. I don't he know is. He does that. have a hard on for the Patriots. He does. But, uh, you know, as a non, as a non Patriot, sometimes it's a little fun to watch. All right, let's get some. Of, let's You're get selfish. Some of these, yeah. I don't like the truth. <laughs> let's get to some of these monkey knife fight uh, prop uh, picks here. Of course, uh, right, rubbing his about- hands together. Can't wait to put the <laughs> money on the table. And I mean, is know, there anything better than watching the big game with a fucking wing in your hand, oh, knowing no. that there's five honey riding on it? And especially with these with these props that you start, like if you're betting the over and you get it early, you get in the third quarter and you're just, you already won the money, everything is gravy afterwards. It's pretty awesome. And again, use that promo code Burr, get a 100% deposit bonus up to 50 bucks and a $5 free play monkey knife fight app. So they they pair these uh, prop bets up. You got to pick two more or less. And if you hit both, you win uh, plus 360. So $100, you win 360. Mahomes, 335 passing yards. I'm going more there. Again, I think even if the Bucks win the game. I think he's going to be throwing a ton. Brady, 303 and a half. I'm going less. And again, I think it's just more they're going to run the ball. I don't see him tossing it a ton. Paul, what are you more or less on uh, Brady and Mahomes? Uh, I think Mahomes, I, don't, I think Mahomes is going to throw less. Yeah, under think, 330. Think, it's think, a, it's what, a high what number. Is it, what is it, 336, you said? 333 and a half. Yeah, I think he's going to throw less than that. I could see him throwing for like 315. You know, two ninety five, something like that, because the Bucks defense is. I think the Bucks defense is good enough to to stop them from throwing over over that number. Um, and and the the number that's really fucking you know uh, hard is is the Brady because that's right around that's right around the number um, that I would say. But I'm gonna say Brady under two. I'm gonna say under both of those. Yeah, it's interesting. That's he's he's only sharp angle there because I mean I think both teams might look to get the running backs going. I, and these are big, like these big numbers. Big, yeah, big numbers. Throwing, throwing, throwing three hundred yards. Throwing three hundred yards in a Super Bowl 
is fucking, you know, those defenses, like it's kind of disrespectful to just be like, oh, he's going to throw for 350. I say under both of those. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, Brady, of course, threw for 515 in a losing effort. Should have gotten the MVP that year against the Eagles. <laughs> against the Eagles. So he certainly has it in him, but that game was in a dome. I don't know. I think it's going to be a little bit more defensive. Bill, well, where are you at with the game Mahomes outside? And Brady? I don't understand that. That was What's in up? a dome. How windy is it outside? <laughs> Oh, they got a no, I, I threw for 350. If I was inside, I'd throw 515. <laughs> <laughs> Get that air conditioner behind you, man. The ball hey, is nice little crosswind on the vent. So you, you, that interests me. Why do you think that uh, Kansas City is going to try to get their running game going? Because I, I, I think there's a version of this where they they try to get cute and everyone thinks they're going to drop back and throw the ball 40, 50 times. And if they can take control of this game early, which is possible. Brady only three points in all of his Super Bowls in the first quarter, which is an amazing stat. So if they can get it's a started, ridiculous early, stat that has nothing to do with this year. He's on a different team with completely different play. I hate when people talk. Listen, about I'm, I'm on Team Brady for the next four days. I, I'm all in. I'm I, I've taken my medicine on Brady. I think he goes over. I think that's the easier one to pick. And what are you at with Mahomes, Kramer? I'm going to go under. Okay. I'm gonna go under. Bill, what are you at? Are you are you under Mahomes over Brady? I am over on both. Nice. Over on both. All right. Over on both. I just think that the way the game is played today, it's just like I mean, you can throw uh, you can throw 150 yards in the fast last two minutes with a prevent defense. That's true. Giving up the middle of the field, blah 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 blah. They just and there's just so many um, there's so many rules that are pro offense. Well, it's interesting too. It's in the conference championship, especially that uh, green Bay Tampa Bay game. They really let them play for most of the game kind of had a late flag there early. It'll be interesting to see if they kind of put away the, the, uh, the flags. We did some deep dive stuff on the ref. He is, he does lean more to letting them play. So it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. If they're calling it tight or if they're, they're letting them check a little bit in the defensive backfield. Here's another uh, they have to address though is that helmet to helmet thing like running backs and wide receivers anytime there's going to be contact they lower their head to their waist so it's like where's the guy supposed to hit him so i i would have a rule that like if if you're a running back like or this it's almost like uh with hockey if it's not above the crossbar you can tip yeah, it like in. Strike goes or something. below the crossbar you are accepting the risk of a fucking concussion and I would love to see them put every announcer through a combine where they force them to run full speed and, <laughs> and then said, okay, try to tackle this target, but I'm going to move it at the last second. So yeah, I mean, I'm with you. We're probably going to see a garbage person. I do think we might see a garbage personal foul, maybe roughing the passer in this one, just because of it, it's, it seems to be the thing everyone's hyper-focused on. Wow. Brady getting a roughing the passer call. I, I can't <laughs> see that happening. Not in the Super Still Bowl. Crying. Still crying, Jesus Christ! Fucking Philly fans, you got your ring. Quit your crying. Another, another fun. Oh, what, what, what are you suggesting that star players get favorable calls? <laughs> no, it's not. It's certainly not the NBA where you know the they guy. know where they're fucking. Through the NBA, I was saying the other day, I've just come to accept the fact that eighty percent of the good players in the NBA at some point are going to play for the Lakers. Just, yeah. Yeah. It's so it's so annoying this it's thing. Not where, even a league anymore. It's like let's watch all the fucking athletes beat up the math team every other game. <laughs> Poor math yeah. athletes. Yeah, Brewer. it's like a pickup game where guys are just like, oh no, these are my friends. I'm gonna play with them. It's like, no, you know, you could be friends with guys, but come on, let's keep these small markets interesting by you know setting it up so the stars just can't decide to leave. Like oh, they just sleep on the Pelicans, oh. man. I think that they're gonna be all right. I think they you know what? Right. Fuck the Brooklyn Nets and fuck <laughs> James Harden. That's the ugliest fucking jersey logo I've ever seen in my life with the parentheses with Brooklyn bigger than the name of the team because they still think it's fucking cool to be in fucking Will. Have you been to Williamsburg, dude? You guys could walk around Williamsburg with fistfuls of cash and nothing would happen to you. And these and they're, and they're fucking playing Brooklyn. Where Brooklyn at? Which like, shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah, it's not. It's oh, not. The Biggie, Barclay Center is a fucking dump. It's not Biggie Smalls is uh, Brooklyn. It's it's kind of changed a little bit. It is amazing though to me that you could just take another NBA franchise and drop it into the fan base of New York Knicks and they would all just walk away. Like I was joking with Paul, I was trying to think of a world where an NBA franchise went to like Worcester, Massachusetts, 
or fucking Attleboro or Providence, and then everybody like, yeah, you know what? Fuck the Celtics. <laughs> it's, it's, Attleboro, <laughs> Attleboro, Rhode Island, Attleboro <laughs> yeah, yeah, where's Worcester at? Where's Worcester? At? Worcester, we go hard. Best Chinese food in the state. <laughs> All right, wow. here's, here's another more or less mixing it up here. We got Leonard Fournette. His more or less is 55 and a half rushing yards, and then Tyree Kill receiving yards more or less 99 and a half. I'm going less on Tyree Kill. I, I think they are going to focus a little bit on Kelsey. They played a ton of single high safety the first game. Hill lit him up. I think they're going to adjust there. So I think less on the receiving yards, and uh, I think Leonard Fournette has a pretty decent game. I'm going more. Uh, over essentially on 55 and a half rushing yards. Verzi, where are you at with these two? Um, fuck man. Those numbers are perfect. Yeah. The numbers are, the numbers are perfect. They know. Uh, I, I, I'm going to say Tyreek Hill is going to be under a hundred yards. I, I think, I think Kelsey's the one, like I said before, that's going to have the yardage. So I would say under for Hill and for net 55 is a perfect number. I, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say under. I'm going to say, dude, I got under for all four. Yeah. Kramer, you're, I know you're leaning into the Ronald Jones angle for the Bucs. Well, Where are you at with Fournette and Hill? I oh, think is he playing? I thought he was hurt. Yeah, he's he's not. I mean, he's healthier. He hasn't had a setback. And this is one of those things where it, you, you got to take a, a stab. A lot, the public and most of the betting, you if you look at the numbers, Fournette's totally you know, much higher than Ronald Jones. I'm in the Jones camp, so I'm going to take under for Fournette. As far as Hill, as much as I don't think he's going to have a massive game, if he has half the game he had last time, he's yeah. still going over by 20 plus yards. So I would say I'm going to go over for Hill just because it's terrifying to take an under with that man. And I'm going to go under also for Leonard Fournette. Bill, where are you at with these two? I'm Leonard going Fournette. over with Tyreek Hill. And Tyreek Hill is so good. If you keep him to 120 yards, that's shutting that man down. Yeah. I don't know well, if he's 99 uh, yards would be like if, if he got hurt, which I don't want to see there. There was a to, to Verzi's point earlier about, uh, you know, kind of trash talk and acting like oh. they've been there before Scotty Miller of the Tampa Bay Bucks is saying that he was faster than Tyree Hill, which was just a hilarious all time uh, <laughs> dude. Look, Why at would you say that? You know what that is? That's what happens when you have a player coach walking around with the fucking Kango hat. Yeah. Stop <laughs> trying to be their friends. He, he Bruce Arians yeah. on the sidelines has been a great storyline. He wears the radio thing like a bandolier across <laughs> his shoulder, and he's always got some funky hat and he's got the welding mask. Him and Reed are just so interesting to watch. Uh, so Leonard Fournette, what were you saying on that over under Bill? Well, I didn't know Ron for think he's be split in time with Ronald Jones. I would say under, but like I th I think that they're just going to be feeding him and trying to wear down uh, Kansas City's defensive line early. Um, cause it's all, I think it's all about time of possession. If you're going to be Kansas city chiefs, you just have, you got to have the fucking ball and keep them on the sideline. Cause they got too many weapons, but I think their defense is very beatable. I think they have a good defense. I don't think they have a great defense. I think Tampa has a better defense than them. Um, they need to get the ball going. So I think they're going to be feeding this guy. So I say he goes over. The only thing that will fuck me is if Ronald Jones also plays and they sort of. Well, yeah, Ronald Jones is interesting. I he need. I need a buck, a hundred yards out of Fournette. That's what Fournette. And that is, yeah. I mean, you can probably find that on Monkey Knife Fight, a, a prop about Leonard Fournette hitting a hundred yards, or maybe the odds on that. I'll take it. Rushing and that. receiving yards, like that's yeah. a fun way. Because uh, did the line of the game, the line of the game stayed at three, right? The line did not change, or is it is it three? Yeah, it's holding at three. There's like a, they're moving it a little bit with the juice, but. It's basically Kansas City minus three, maybe minus 120. And it sounds right now. like it would be three and a half, but there's so much liability on the Buccaneers' futures because of those people who bet the Bucks as soon as Tom <laughs> Brady went there. So, yeah, it, it doesn't look like it's going to move to three and a half. And there's also all the Brady fanboys like me who are just going to bet them. Well, and I, and like, I, I took that my medicine. the line where it is. I well, took, yeah, and it's, I, it, it's weird to see the Chiefs not be the public side because they have that – high powered offense, bunch of big names, but then you're obviously you're going against Brady and his, you know, crazy super bowl record going for seven. Uh, this is another uh, monkey knife fight game. They got pick three, you pick three of these 
you win uh, six to one, so plus six hundred. These bet are all 100. basically parlays. It's yes, great. you're but you're just parlaying these player props, and they these ones have have spread. So you're basically picking one to the other with the spread. Uh, first part: Patrick Mahomes passing yards or Tom Brady plus thirty and a half. Again, I'm leaning on Mahomes' big yardage game, throwing the ball. Travis Kelsey or Tyree Kill, but Tyree Kill is getting one and a half on the receptions. I, I still think Kelsey is going to be the guy come Sunday. Although you're getting a you're getting a free and a half reception with Tyreek Hill. What does that mean? What does that mean? Three and a half with the with the reception. So, so basically, like if Kelsey had ten catches, but Tyreek Hill had nine, Tyreek Hill would win because he, the spread is one and a half. So he essentially would be ten and a half. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's getting wild. Yeah, that this 4D is 4D chess over here. Yeah, this is real. I would, I would definitely take Kelsey because Kelsey's just going to run yeah. shorter routes. He's going to be right there. He's a bigger target. Everybody yeah. in the world's going to be trying to stop Tyree Kill. He's going to get his catches and he's going to get his yards, but I don't think he's going to. Uh, yeah, and then the last have more yards with less catches because he just you know chunks. you know nobody nobody's talking about special teams. I have a feeling, and I don't know if there's a prop bet with this. I got a feeling that that Kansas City Chief kid, I don't know if it's Heartline or whatever, the kid that fumbled on Hard the game. one or whatever yeah. he fumbled on the thing and then they scored and then he came back and he got his head together. I have a feeling that kid's going to have a big play on special teams. Can I bet that anywhere or no? Oh yeah. Yeah. Defensive or special teams touchdown, I think is 20 to one for the chiefs. I got a little taste on that. And though, I mean, those are the kind of like fun, random bets that are just great for the super bowl. I also, you guys will like this one. <laughs> I have a offensive lineman to score a touchdown at like 25 to one. I could see uh, gotta be a cheek. That's an Andy Reed move. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what I was <laughs> nice. saying. I like that. bet. I like that bet. It's uh, it's fun. And just seeing an offensive lineman spike the ball. It's going to be someone on the right side. Cause they're not going to leave him blind on the other side. That that is true, and I is that where Remmers plays? They're missing they're missing both their tackles, but yeah, I think Remmers is filling in I, at left tackle. <laughs> I can definitely you send us. Can you send? Th does the site have every every bet? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Monkey Knife Fight. They have a ton of these uh, these player props, but yeah, you, you there you got to find a guy for some of these. They're a little uh, they're a little off the beaten path. Last one here: Godwin receiving yards or Mike Evans receiving yards. Uh, and Mike Evans is getting 12 and a half yards against Chris Godwin. I think Evans might be the guy over Godwin uh, for this game. It's kind of interesting. They go back and forth. Godwin had a huge game against Green Bay, but I think Evans might have the bigger game come Super Bowl. Paul, where are you at with uh, with these uh, these last three? Dude, I I mean this fucking wholeheartedly. If the Bucks win this game, Mike Evans is going to be a huge part of it. It's you could just see it unfolding when you watch them week to week and the chemistry he's got with Brady and Brady loves him, uh, you know, but you know, 15 yard line it, towards the, in the red zone. He loves going to him. Um, I definitely, I would take Evans over, over Godwin uh, in that one for sure. Hey, was there any action on uh, Tyreek Hill or that number 17? Who's that number 17 on the chiefs? Nicole that heartline kid. That's yeah. the kid. I'm yeah. Yeah. Are you talking about him right now? That was no. talking about the kid, that special teams kid that I think is going to do something. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you might be able to find they have a ton of like player player matchups, so I'm sure they have one for him. The right. spread's probably going to be pretty big on that one. I'm sure Hardman's getting like, what do you think, Kramer? 50, 60 yards? Yeah, I mean, Hardman's an interesting guy. So one fun way to play a prop on him is that he gets a rushing attempt. Uh, they they get him yeah. involved in like a reverse or something. I saw that was like three three and a half to oh, one. Man. So I, I mean, it, it's here's the key to the Super Bowl. Like PSA to anyone listening, is have enough prop bets where you're you're sufficient every five <laughs> minutes. Something, some sort of action is happening, so you don't get bored with the game when Tom Brady and the Bucks are. All right, well, here's how I watch the game. What I do is I grill and I smoke a stick and I hit record, and I don't start the game. I shut off my phone. I don't start the game for like ninety minutes. Uh, like an hour just, 45. Do the and I, just, I mean, I can't do that. I don't know how you have everything, just... <laughs> all the dumb commercials, stupid halftime fucking show. Oh, you're going to miss the weekend. <laughs> then, then you get, you get caught up uh, end of third quarter, early fourth quarter. If you do it right. Yeah. yeah that's that's probably better, uh, Jim, Jim Florentine. It's better for like the West coast. Cause East coast. I mean, the game comes on later. Out nobody West is perfect. To, nobody wants to hear the weekend at halftime. It's a fucking <laughs> no. garbage. It's fucking garbage. 
Canadians every year. <laughs> um, it dude, I'm gonna bet robot. all. This. What am I supposed to do with that robot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't need to see a fox uh, uh, doing calisthenics. It's a fucking show. <laughs> Uh, oh. Florentine, God bless him. Uh, so, Bill, where are you at with these? Uh, you got Mahomes, Brady. I'm going to say you're going Brady. What as about? Far as, uh, wait, 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 no, no. As far as like what? Who's going to throw more yards? Brady. The, the spread. Brady's getting 30 and a half on passing yards. He gets 30 and a half. Like he's yeah. an underdog. Yeah. Um, no, I think Mahomes will throw more. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't and think then, he's going to win. But I still think he's going to throw more. It's going to be one of those weird games. Well, and that's the thing too. For his passing yardage, he can throw for four hundred and Bucks still win this game. I wouldn't be shocked if something like that happens. Uh, Kelsey receptions, Tyreek Hill receptions. Uh, Tyreek is getting one and a half catches against oh, Kelsey's Kelsey. going to have more catches. No, Kelsey's going to have Kelsey's going to have more for sure. Yeah. Paul, I believe this is my time. <laughs> you had your time. You guys can vote. Did I give that? Did I give that? I don't even know if I give that. So if I didn't give it, I'm sorry. Oh no, that's all good. And then the last oh, one, I is... Kelsey, just because, like I said, he's a big. You know what? I actually jumped in during your question. So, <laughs> hey, we're we're having fun. Well, Can your you... head is shaped exactly like that, Mike. It's fucking unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got it dialed in. Uh, Godwin receiving yards or Mike Evans receiving yards. Evans is getting 12 and a half. Verzi, I know you're all over Evans here. Are you with him on this, Bill? Which one's Godwin? There are other options. I don't He's even know the kid about from him. Penn State. He uh he had the big game against Green Bay. He's kind of an up he, and down. He's the kid who had the five. Yeah, drops. he has some drops though. So I'll go with Evans. All right. Kramer, where are you at with these? I, I, I kind of I like the angle that I think Evans is the sneaky guy that everyone seems to be forgetting. He's the number one guy. And let's not forget, he made Johnny football look good in college. Like that guy's good. We and were at that game. I watched him against Alabama. Uh, Johnny Manziel threw two touchdowns to him. And they went up 14 nothing to Alabama. And then Alabama had five in a row without that. That was I'll it. tell you, that's the loudest I've ever heard any fan base ever. Yeah. Ever. We were in college really? station. They were going fucking crazy. And, and Johnny Manziel had beat Alabama in Alabama, one of my favorite games ever. In Alabama. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny Manziel had a ton of fun moments. Sorry in to interrupt you, by the way, Kramer. My bad. Oh, bad. oh no worries. And I, I'm I'm on Brady as well. So on Brady as well. All right. That'll do it for the monkey knife fight props. Make sure you uh get in there, get the app, sign up, use that promo code Burr, get that sweet deposit bonus. Make sure you uh, subscribe to anything better. Spell out my last name. These are sports fans. B-U-R-R. There you go. They'll spell it B-E-R-R. <laughs> a B-U-R-E. I don't know. Yeah. B-O-R-G. <laughs> it should have been beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, appreciate the time, guys. Make sure you check out the Anything Better podcast on all things comedy. Good luck with the picks, gentlemen. All right. Great. Thank Thanks, you so guys. much, guys. Take it easy. Oh yeah, BetQL. That's right. BetQL.com, perfect place to bet smarter, not harder. Tons of information, tons of uh, sharp action. See where the sharps are, see where the money's coming in. Plus, they got a best bets algorithm scanning thousands of data points to give you some of the best picks around. And a Super Bowl special. That's right. Super Bowl special running from now until the Super Bowl. SGP 50 gets 50% off your premium subscription. SGP 50 over at BetQL.com. And they're going hard in the paint for the Super Bowl prop bets, covering over 80 prop bets. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, BetQL.com. If you haven't signed up, download the app, get in there, get involved. Sign up for the premium service. They also have a ton of uh, offers as well for sports books in your area, but they cover it all uh, college football, college basketball, and FCS coming, NBA, NHL, Premier League, Champions League, Bundesliga, Ryan. Ooh. They got it all. Uh, I'm seeing a five star college basketball play right here. Again, head over to betql.com, use a promo code SGP50 while supplies last for the Super Bowl special. betql.com, promo code SGP50. Joining us on the line, owner of the Circa Resort and Casino and the best damn sports book in the world, Derek Stevens. Derek, it's you got to be uh, like a kid at Christmas right now, getting ready for the Super Bowl. Oh man, this is uh you know what a great week, you know. Now now we're really getting into it. Now it's the week where uh 
you know, all the info's coming out and uh, everybody's, uh, everybody's trying to make, the, make their determination of which way they're going, what prop they're taking and all that. You know, for us, what, uh, what's pretty cool is, you know, this is only the second time Circus Sports has been around for Super Bowl. So this is our year two. And, uh, boy, I can tell you, the, the volume has been, uh, volume has been heavy. So it's, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty encouraging. Well, uh, speaking of volume heavy, I saw <laughs> on your uh, I saw on your Twitter that you guys got an onslaught of tails action, <laughs> and actually had to move the juice a little bit. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, you know, look at this. These guys, everybody's coming in. You know, you <laughs> keep hearing this. Tails never fail. We had to go to minus one hundred five plus one hundred four on the tail side. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, I got I got to get my uh, heads bet in over with you guys because uh, plus one hundred four. That's crazy. Now, uh, what, what are you, uh, you personally, I've, I've thought about this as a, as a guy who maybe dreams of owning a sports book one day, yep. but you're also still a fan. And that's, what's great about Derek and the sports book really caters to fellow, uh, fellow D gens and really builds a good experience over there uh, for watching the games. And I know Derek always has some action, likes, likes a rooting interest, but do you ever find yourself rooting for a team, but then you see the numbers and you guys actually need the opposite side. Does that happen very often? You know, it's happened. Uh, it's happened quite often actually. <laughs> so, so as far as me making a play, you know, if I was going to make a play, I'd make a big play and kind of make a splash out of it. Maybe, uh, you know, in the first week, but, but to some degree I'm going to kind of hold off because there's nothing worse. Like, you know, if I got to go, if I go across the street and I bet like, uh, you know, I don't know but whatever, whatever my bet would be at that time. But then all of a sudden, you know, one minute after kickoff, I get the text from Matt Metcalf, Matt Metcalf and uh, Chris Bennett saying, Hey, uh, we're going to be down 800,000 on this side. And like that, <laughs> if that's what I'm, I'm like, Oh God, it's just so disheartening to root against your own personal bets. You know? Oh dude. I know. I, and I know, you it's know, the toughest part of the business. <laughs> yeah. You got to kind of put it aside, but it's a super bowl. You have to have some thoughts, some leans, Obviously, tails getting a ton of action. Is there any other prop bets that you, that seem pretty popular for you guys uh, right now that a lot of people are piling on? Yeah, I would say you know, um, you know, the the ones the the general prop bets that are getting a lot of action um, really comes down to a, a lot of prop bets that include Mahomes and include Kelsey, include Sammy Watkins. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on the other side, you got you got Brady and Evans and things like that. I think we're we're seeing a pretty good, uh, pretty fair amount of action on all those. Um, but you know, right now, most of, uh, most of the props are coming in, like, as you'd expect on, you know, over a number of, uh, over an, six and a half catches over 94 and a half yards. You get a lot, we're getting a lot of that, but, um, but you know, the sharps out here and the arbitrage guys, they're, uh, they're keeping the numbers pretty fair, but I would say, you know, mostly in all the regular prop bets, we've seen a lot of over action. And then, you know, outside of what I would say would be the regular, um, you know, circa circus sports does something called the circus square. Oh yeah. And, and the volume on the circus squares, <laughs> you know, we invented this last year. We, we, uh, we, we actually liked the idea so much. I, you know, I trademarked the name and we, we got a patent out um, oh, sweet. On, on, uh, on, on, on circus squares and, and yeah, this is our own kind of little thing. And, and, you know, we had some good expectations for this last year, but it just kind of blew us away, like by a factor of 10. And, uh, and, and I think maybe the words out, this is our year two with circus squares and uh, yeah, the volume is just through the roof. So if, yeah. if some of your listeners don't know, I mean, really what it is, is I think everybody knows what a squares board is. You know, you go to a bar or you go to a Super Bowl party and, uh, and, you know, you, you, you get into a board, it could be a $10 board, could be a, $50, $100, bigger board. And then once, you know, all this, all hundred squares are filled up, you know, they randomly select the, the digit for uh, one team and the digit for the other. And then you get that throughout the game. Yeah. We invented it where, you know, you could select, you know, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, oh, the game, yes. and you select your own, your, your own number. So like if, yeah, if you want, you know, after the end of the first quarter, you want chief seven and, and you want buck zero or bucks three, you can select it out and, and, and the odds change, obviously, depending upon what you're betting. I mean, obviously in the first quarter, if you go with five, five, you're going to get a huge number, but, <laughs> but you know, I, the probability of hitting is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty slim. I mean, I well, think, yeah. And that's, and but, it, 
it's it's so cool because there's nothing worse than you, know, you get excited, give your hundred bucks, you get a square, and it's like two six, and you go, oh my god, I'm never gonna hit two six. And then now this gives you the option of buying a really good square. Uh, it's I've been it's buying a these up idea. like shares at Disney for my retirement. <laughs> I gotta ask Derek because everyone in my local Super Bowl squares pool wants to know what's the sharp <laughs> combination this year. What's the what's the combination people are getting down on? Well, you know, no, it's kind of funny is that when we opened the second quarter, you know, there's a combination that you would think would be very, very unlikely. And it's the two, two, we put it out at 1500 to one. And you would think that that could never happen except for the fact that it happened three Super Bowls ago, you know, yeah. at 1500 to one. So, so, you know, there's a lot of people taking, taking the shots on, uh, <laughs> on the numbers that are more than a thousand to one. And then, and then obviously, you know, you try to come up with, I really think where the value is. If you, if you go with a three or seven on one side, and then you kind of mix it up, hoping hoping for a crooked number on the other side. That's where you're going to see a little value out there. Yeah, and and, <sighs> and there is, you know, when they move the extra point back and uh, things got a little bit more wonky as far as mixed extra points. Now, Butker for the Chiefs, he's he's missed a couple there, a couple doings off the crossbar as well. Maybe one of these two teams go for two, and that's where you start getting those interesting numbers. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if we, we end up with an interesting number here. What about the game itself? We were, we were talking about on the podcast. It seems like everyone is going to end up holding uh, Tampa Bay plus three and not move it up to three and a half with the idea that a lot of these books have liability on Tampa Bay futures. Cause people, you know, took a shot when, uh, when Brady ended up signing there, do you see a, a three and a half for Tampa Bay at all? Or is there any chance Kansas city goes to two and a half? How does it look right now? Yeah. Right now you're, you're asking a question that I have a meeting on every <laughs> single morning, by yeah. the way. So it's a great question, but I can tell you as of today, we're, uh, we're still hanging tight at three with juice to juice to the chiefs at, uh, at, at one twenty. Um, we made the determination that we're going to hold the 120 as long as we can. Um, if we have to make a move, we're not going to go to one and a quarter. We're going to go to a three and a hook, and and um, we're going to do that because because you know when you're on the when you're on the three, you could buy a half, you could buy the half up, or you could buy the half down for a quarter. So instead of going to a three. Minus one twenty five plus one oh five situation. We're gonna move it up to a three and a half. Now obviously I, I'm I'm that that's the worst case scenario as far as I'm concerned, because that opens you up to get sided. Yeah. You know, that that that's the situation. We know right now if we go to a three and a half, we're gonna get a lot of Tampa Bay buyback real, real quick at plus the three and a half. And and all of a sudden you're gonna sit there in a position where if the Chiefs win by three, you know, you can get into a lot of trouble. So we're going to try to hold, hold tight on three as long as we can. Um, I would tell you that right now, um, the way the line looks, I would tell you, don't think that the line is going to go to a two and a half. I don't think that's the case. If anything, the line will go to a three and a half. Um, I would tell you though, on the money line, uh, the money line is going to come down. I mean, mm. you know, this is the one game where the money line doesn't necessarily perfectly correlate with the with the, with the point spread. So, you know, everybody's going to either be betting the chiefs laying the lay in the three or three and a half. And they're all betting Tampa uh, plus the one fifty right now. Yeah. So that, Ooh. that uh, makes you want to take a two point difference on the final <laughs> square numbers, maybe. Cause you know how this is going to land. Oh, uh, that would be, that would probably be a dream <laughs> scenario for Derek. <laughs> well, I was going to ask Derek. So obviously one of the things that can influence a late line move is big action. So has, has a, has there been any big action yet? And, and B, do you anticipate any big duffel bags coming through? <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, as far as the duffel bags go, yeah, we had about five duffel bags show up yesterday. Wow. Um, you know, I'm in my office, and you know, my bet ticker comes across, and when you have a bet of a certain uh, dollar amount, it comes across as a different color. And you know, I could be working on one computer, and I see this other color pop up, and then I'm able to take a look at it. Then I look at my surveillance, and I get to watch what's going on. But yeah, I saw five five separate um, bags of of various type and various quality. Um, the range, <laughs> the, 
the bag, the nicest bag was a very, very nice Prada bag that dumped out about 20. But the most, the bag with the most amount of cash was a little plastic bag that came out of CVS and he dumped <laughs> out about 60. Oh. So, so the, the quality of the bag is not indicative of the quantity of the money. Yeah. It's like that uh, Indiana Jones, you know, the best one isn't the one that. Oh. That looks the best. Look, the rich didn't yeah. get rich buying Prada bags. <laughs> CVS plastic bag will do just fine. Yeah, they're, they, you know, they're I, not. I gonna... would tell you, I would, I would tell you though, I do think that by the time we get to, we're, we're going to start seeing money. It's, it's pretty consistent in Las Vegas. You start seeing it um, popping up a little bit Thursday night, and then Friday afternoon and Friday night. That's when, that's when it's a great time to be alive and a great time to be in Las Vegas. It's a <laughs> Great people watching place. Oh you man! You know we go away from plastic bags, and we go to some serious shit like uh, like Nike bags that could, could hold some hold some real dough. And and then that's when you really start the people. You start seeing people popping up from all over the country. It's a Friday night in Las Vegas before Super Bowl is really a bucket list uh, a bucket list time because. The people watching is just incredible to see uh, see how people are coming out of the woodwork to make their place. Yeah, and if you're out there for Vegas or planning on going, make sure you stop by uh, Derek's spot there. Circa. Only only if you want to see the baddest place. On, oh in, yeah, in and, and and obviously Stadium Swim, beautiful facility there, and then the indoor sports book. The screen itself is as a sports fan, it's it's just uh, majestic. <laughs> and uh, I mean, Derek, what about you? What about you personally? Any prop bets? That you uh you're you're you know if you were to get down you really like a certain angle where are you at with the game? Um, where I'm, I'm where I'm personally at at the game is uh, I like Tampa plus the plus the three and a half if you can find it I take Tampa I would take Tampa plus three even but I but I prefer to have Tampa uh, plus three and a half laying the one ten um, I, I like their defense I think they've been underrated I've uh, I've had a little bit of a benefit that I've had some buddies that have been really riding on, on Tampa early. You remember throughout this season how there were some some people that got really fired up with the Chiefs early, and then and then a lot of people really got fired up with Bills Mafia and and really thought they were going to do it or the Ravens were. And I just happened to be a guy that watched Tampa the whole the whole the whole season, and uh, I just think this defense is underrated, and um, and I do think that Tom Brady. It's, there's a, there's a little something special going on here. So I I'm, I'm more on the Tampa side and believe me, I'm, I've always been a Chiefs fan. I've been a Mahomes fan big time. I, I had him last year, but I, I think it's just going to be hard to win two, uh, two super bowls in a row. I'm a little leery about the, uh, the, the tackle situation. And um, um, if I'm forced to make a play, I'm taking Tampa Bay plus three and a half. Get those. Uh, now get get that crowbar and again, Eli Manning not coming out of the tunnel for the Chiefs. <laughs> Tough to beat Tom Brady. Now, what about what about the plans for actually watching the game? Are you going to be out uh, mingling? Do you have an area set up where you plan on watching? Walk us through a, a Derek Stevens Super Bowl party come Sunday, or or maybe you just hole up in your office and sweat it out. What what's the plan? <laughs> It's funny. I just kind of went through that with uh, my assistant GV uh, a couple days ago, and uh, yeah, we got a lot of parties. You know, this year with uh, with some of the COVID restrictions, um, you know, a lot of people think, well, there's going to be less people. And really, what it does is it, it makes us have more creativity. So we have instead of having you know an 800 person party, now we're having 16, 50, 50 person parties. Yeah. You know, so we got to do We got to do a lot of walking. So we're doing a party at bar Canada at the D um, we're doing a party up on uh, at the Detroit ballroom, of the D at the uh, Saginaw Petoskey rooms are going up there. So I got to make rounds over there. And then we got something going on at mega bar. We got something going on at the underhang bar. Then in the sports book, the overhang, both overhang left <laughs> and right and up to the legacy club stadium swims, got all the command stadium swims sold out by the way. Oh, Pretty wow. Amazing. Congrats. And and we we got so many people coming that I got squeezed out. I don't have a place. <laughs> I don't have a, a place to watch it. So what we're doing is I'm opening up one of our shelf floors up on the 15th floor. I'm having about 50 50 of uh, my friends come over and we're gonna watch it and overlook Stadium Swim. So oh. we're gonna have our own little deal up there uh, for Super Bowl. So it's the first time I'm trying that, but uh, I'm excited about it. So a lot, lot of people, a lot of different groups. 
Yeah, no, that sounds awesome. Uh, uh, yeah, can't stress enough. Like, if you haven't seen it, and you're going to be in Vegas. Like, no. figure figure it out. Get down there. Yeah, it is a, truly a uh, gambling oasis. Make sure you hit that up. And uh, Derek, so do you see yourself needing rooting for the Chiefs come kickoff, or are you rooting for the Bucks? Where where do you f- figure your final rooting position will end up? Um, if I had to take a guess, based <laughs> upon um, you know. Based upon the individuals I know that are coming in, um, <laughs> you know, got a handful handful of pretty good pretty good players that play on the Kansas City Royals, so I kind of have a feeling I know which way they're going to make a play. <laughs> I uh, we got we got a handful of handful of players coming in, uh, you know, that have been Kansas City fans for a while. I would tend to think um, Circus Sports is going to need is going to need Brady and it's going to need uh need Tampa on Sunday. I, I, I also think that there's still so much, uh, so much love for Mahomes and Kelsey and uh, Tyree kill that, that I think that uh, it, it would be very, very unique. Um, we would have to have a whole syndicate of people that come out with, with saying they want Tampa but I, I just don't see that happening. So I think the house is going to need Tampa on Sunday. Now, what do you, is there a popular under bet for these player props? Because it, it seems like there's so many big names with these skill position players. Most, I, it, it feels like even sharp guys are leaning over on, on a bunch of these. Do you see one popular player prop under that, that everyone's, uh, you know, getting down on? Well, I, you know, the one thing I would say is Take a look at at the number in the in the middles. I mean, there there's there's props out here where you could go over fifty eight and a half yards and under eighty one yards. You know, you've got you know books set prop numbers differently than you set you know uh, a, a line in a game or or the total in a game. So you know they adjust it by juice. So so it really comes down to you know there, there's some potential for some decent middles. You just got to watch what type of, uh, what type of juice you pay. So yeah. I, I, I can't really see that one way or the other cause, because it really depends where your out is. No, you're right. And, and especially if you haven't gotten down with player props, especially in the super bowl, crazy swings, as far as what stuff opens at, what it closes at, where you can get it at. So uh, make sure you have a bunch of places to shop. And again, if you're in Las Vegas, do yourself a favor, head over to the circuit, Las Vegas resort and casino. Derek, always appreciate you calling in. Appreciate the time. Best of luck with the super bowl. And uh, you know, hopefully we'll see you in a couple months out here. Maybe March madness, give Derek a follow on Twitter at Derek J Stevens and uh, let it ride. Derek. Appreciate it, man. Let it ride. Have a good super bowl guys. Thanks. Thanks for talking. You too, man. Cheers. Oh yeah, always good to hear from our buddy Derek. And speaking of our buddies, all the SGPN friends and family, you can catch them all over on Better Than Vegas, giving out daily video picks completely free. And uh, it's not just us over there; tons of people giving out free picks, analysis, betting advice. They got it all. It's like YouTube, but for sports betting. And you got to subscribe to our page so you never miss a pick. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. Better than Vegas. Sign up over there. Catch all our video picks. See our amazing mugs on camera. Better than Vegas, baby. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. Kramer closing it out. Mm. Super Bowl week. We, of course, (laughs) won. $4,000 $4,000 in the capper cup. No big deal. We got it stored in an account and we just took a nice long break and went through and laid all $4,000 on the super bowl. Let's go, baby. We'll rattle through all these props. And if you want the explanations, th- it's mostly the props we've done from the chiefs episode, the exotic, the, yeah. the, the over Bucks $9 episode. million dollars in props. We've already given out Sean yes. th- those props. So if you want the in-depth explanation, go back and listen to those pods and good pods. If I'm being uh, completely uh, honest, tout, 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 some solid content. The content train coming to a uh, coming to a strong finish here as we close out the NFL. And of course, we will see you for our Super Bowl pregame show, starting off with our live "Let It Ride" 2 p.m. West Coast kick. Let's get through it, Kramer. All right, let's let's rattle them off. We're going in order of smallest bet to biggest bet to start it off. A couple sure. D-Gen props, Sean at 102 to one, Cameron Brait. Yep. 
to get 120 yards, one touchdown, and Tampa to win. I threw out at 92 to 1, 150 yards, and two touchdowns from Sammy Watkins. Both of those are $20 to nearly win 2,000 each. So oh we God. said we were going to get one this year. Let's go get Perfect one time. in the big game. Uh, next up, Sean, we got Tom, tag only. Tom Brady. Tom Brady's age to be mentioned before the fact that it's his 10th Super Bowl. This is an even money bet. $50 to win 50. Next up, Daryl Will. Here's our first touchdown portfolio for the game. <laughs> Daryl Williams and Patrick Mahomes to have the first touchdown on the Chiefs side, both at 13 to 1. On the Bucks side, Cameron Brait, 20 to 1. Ronald Jones, 19 to 1. Uh, all of those for $50 each. Next, Hell yeah. next up, we're playing the uh we're playing the Will Devin White get an interception game. 19 to 1, Sean. Mm. 19 to 1. That that feels nice. Another $50 bet for us. Moving on. End of the game. We're taking clear Gatorade. Protocols will be in order. Maybe TJ will steer <laughs> us live uh, if we're wrong. hundred dollars on that one. I like how we have more on that than than the first eight <laughs> props we've given out. Uh, highest scoring quarter will be the third. That's gonna that's kind of a fun one, and you'll see it ties into the narrative of a lower scoring first half, higher scoring second half. A hundred dollars on that. Of course, that's, that's plus four hundred. Plus four hundred, and of course, uh, we can't go through a Super Bowl props or a Bucks props <laughs> discussion without Scott. Gangster ass Scott Miller, who there is faster than Tyreek Hill, over one and a half receptions at plus one twenty seven. Another hundo on that. Will there be a score in the last three minutes and thirty seconds of the fourth quarter? Uh, we got limited here, Sean. Yes, is minus <laughs> one seventy five. Only able to get down for a hundred. Love that. This is going to come down to the wire, right? It's got to be made for TV. Will there be a missed extra point? I highlighted the math in this one. So you liked it, Ryan, and you talked me into it. So uh, so tune in to to the earlier discussion about the math and why it's great. Plus two forty, another hundred on that. Mahomes and Brady both to have an incomplete to start. These are two separate bets. Mahomes plus one eighty. Brady was plus one seventy five. Quite generous. We put two fifty on each side again. <coughs> highlighted the math and as to why this gives us a fifty seven percent chance of profiting. Uh, next up, Gronk to have the first reception for Tampa. This is where we shove some chips into the table a little bit. Uh, Two hundred and fifty dollars, and this was not a uh, little little like minus one ten. This was a seven to one, Sean. So <laughs> big dog uh, Gronk, nice, come on, nice, don't, don't let us down. <laughs> big opportunity cost there. <laughs> hey, it's Gronk, it's Brady, it's the Super Bowl. Why not? Daryl Williams next up over two receptions. We both really like yeah. the surprise. It's not. Two I liked and a it half. at two and a half, and we got it at over two plus one hundred. It's definitely the one of the ways you can attack that defense. Three hundred uh, at even money. Ronald Jones, my guy, <laughs> over three and a, uh, thirty. We we talked about the carries on the on the podcast, Sean. Uh, we're gonna take the over thirty seven and a half rush yards uh, minus one fourteen for three hundred because it was a better price than the carries. People must have listened. The carries are w moving up. Hot and heavy. Long. All right. Cox. Big investment coming here. First quarter under plus 100, under 10. We put 500 on that, Sean. Again, yes. low scoring first half, higher scoring second half. First offensive play is going to be a run. <laughs> we didn't talk about this one yet. Moon off uh, made, made, he brought, he dropped a decent amount of knowledge on the first offensive play and got me thinking run is the way to go. And the price at plus 100 feels great. Nice contrarian angle, 500 again. And then the biggest investment, highest scoring half will be the second half. We put $810. You Going wonder all why? In, baby. Because we wanted 21 <laughs> bets and we had $810 left. So it's you're welcome. Check right there. We should set a, uh, a player. Pro uh, you know what? This'll be fun. We will give away a SGP hoodie. For whoever gets the closest to our balance without going over prices right mm. style. So whoever guesses the closest amount uh, to what we have in our balance, we're not gonna put any other bets in there. When it, it is all said and done at the end of the Super Bowl, wins a SGP hoodie. So just uh, tweet us at gambling podcast your best bet there. And uh, closest one wins a hoodie. Should be fun. Brian almost forgot. Actually, uh, we did forget. We <laughs> we stopped recording the podcast. I started driving away. I go, holy shit! We forgot to actually give out our final score predictions. 
Hashtag Dejans only. So caught up in all the action, the monkey knife fight props. Uh, make sure you check those out. Promo code Burr. Just so much, so many and, and then, irons in the fire. <laughs> literally twenty one bets. We don't give the people what they really want. Yeah. And that is the final score predictions. Well, I'm sure Pre- they like 21 bets and $9 million <laughs> in props and all that other good yeah. stuff. So many, so many. I think we both know what side we were on, but Kramer, I'll let yeah. you have the floor. What is your final score prediction for Super Bowl 55? You know, I went back and forth on where to put the final score, and it always, it, it, it always just feels better to be weird. So I'm going to stay being weird. Uh, and I'm going to say Bucks 34. Chiefs 29. Ooh, okay. Well, that's good if you have a weird square like a 4 9. <laughs> I'm going to go slightly under Chiefs. I'm saying Chiefs 31, Bucks 21. So 52 total points. I'll go a little Goes bit under. For, yeah, the other the other hot take I have is I I think Brady, I think we continue this streak of low scoring first quarters and it's really about the second half when it comes well, to Well, I hope so cuz we we went heavy on that Kramer. Yeah, I'm talking it into existence. That's how it works. <laughs> Again, tune into the pregame show two o'clock Pacific, Super Bowl Sunday. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling podcast. And uh, live calls on the locker room app. So stay tuned there for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Yes, yes, yes. Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Yes, yes, yes. Kramer, let it ride.